uh, I will uh, start uh, my speech again. Uh, for ages, we were trying to find the best answer for the question of the state. Who should be at the head of the state? Who should control uh, the people and uh, direct their uh, lives? Uh, previously, we thought that we, have the, we had the perfect solution, the democracy, but uh, the facts and the history uh, proved us that we are wrong. People elected uh, other people and uh, elected people failed at their jobs. Why is that? In our uh, part, the debate will be answering that question and we will be giving the solution, which is uh, technocracy. So, uh, what uh, does technocracy mean? Technocracy means that uh, if you uh, need to uh, nominate yourself to a certain position in the government, you should be uh, competent for that position, which means you should have a degree in that position and you should have at least uh, five years of experience in that position. What's the difference be uh, between the, techno uh, techno uh, the techno uh, technocratic state and the democratic state? In the democratic state, any person can nominate himself to any position in the state. But uh, in uh, our uh, side of the motion, uh, that, uh, that can't be. Uh, we know just uh, the people that uh, have experience and degree and knowledge in their uh, in that uh, specialty to be in the state for example if you want to be a prime minister you should uh, have a degree in something related to political science if you uh, want the, to be the financial minister you need to have a degree uh, in finance or something related to it if you want to be the minister uh, minister of uh, education you should have a degree uh, in that uh, uh, place and etc. Uh, uh, so uh, what uh, what we are trying to tell you in that debate from our side of the house is this approach of managing the government of deciding who wants to be the rule and the head of uh, the state and take positions in the state is mo uh, much more effective than the democracy and uh, much better. Why is that? My first argument. Uh, it's uh, a better uh, a better process for choosing the leadership. Uh, in a democratic state, anybody can nominate himself and won not because of their competence in managing that position, but because of their competence in convincing people. When uh, a president came, uh, if he can uh, speak well, if he can talk to masses well, and also if he has a good connection with the media and the good connections uh, of the uh, institutions and the companies uh, all over the country, uh, he will have uh, more convincing power uh, over the people and uh, he will be able to make his message reach the people more. Uh, when the competent people that doesn't have that ability, that can't convince uh, uh, the people very well and that uh, can't talk the masses and even if they could just don't have that money that they can use to run in their campaign, they will find themselves in disadvantage when in fact they are more competent in managing uh, in managing the states and managing uh, uh, the presidency position uh, in that state and taking the better uh, decisions in that state. So when we are uh, allowing everybody uh, to run for the states, uh, that will uh, cause the, uh, that uh, less competent people to reach uh, the highest positions in the state, which will be uh, less effective uh, in the uh, less effective uh, less effective for the state. Uh, and let's talk, for example, for example, we have a clear example about that, Donald Trump. Donald Trump has no experience in, poli uh, in politics. He is a businessman. How he reached the state? He reached the state through playing on the populism, uh, populism uh, when he talks to uh, a simple people with a rhetorical way, promising that he will solve all his, uh, their problems and uh, an imaginary photo of the reality uh, that's not a true. I uh, I will take your point. Yeah, it seems that your mechanism is rather mild, as in that uh, is not enough uh, to require degrees from people who are running for offices to really call it a technocracy. There needs to be certain lack of democracy there. 
uh, when you when you prevent uh, people uh, who want to nominate themselves and uh, doesn't have an experience, uh, as I said, at least five years or a university degree in that position, uh, that's uh, a violation for democracy because the democracy uh, tells you that you have uh, everybody has the right to rule uh, and to have the position in the state. Uh, so. Uh, uh, let me go back to uh, uh, my point. When uh, how Donald Trump breached the power, he reached the power by, uh, by using uh, his money and uh, uh, lying to people and uh, bloating an imaginary photo of the reality and uh, framing himself in the photo of the savior. Uh, and uh, uh, overall, that he used Cambridge Analyt uh, Analytica and. Uh, uh, analyze the personalities of uh, people through uh, Facebook and send them uh, messages uh, that uh, could be more convincing. So when you have a person that uh, is not uh, competent for that position and can run uh, through the democracy, uh, then uh, you have uh, uh, catastrophic decisions. What uh, the, uh, what uh, what's the catastrophic decision that he has made? Uh, now America has become uh, the first, as he said, but the first on the uh, number of people do, who has uh, corona and number of people who has died from corona. Uh, if uh, the process of choosing uh, the president were uh, were a technocratic and not a democratic in that uh, state, uh, Hillary Cl uh, Clinton would have won, and we uh, and uh, the situation would have been better. And we, the more than 80,000 people that have died in the corona crisis, more than half of them would be with uh, us now. Their families wouldn't have been missed them, and uh, the world wouldn't have been threatened to enter a uh, third world war when uh, killing uh, Soleimani happened, or uh, the war between China, uh, the economical war between China and the US or the oil war that made the U.S. oil companies collapse. All that bad decisions that have been made have been made because the democratic system uh, is flawed in, in of itself because uh, any person can nominate himself to be uh, ahead of the state. But when uh, you really let just the competent people that have a degree and experience in that position nominate them, uh, only uh, nominate them to that uh, state, then you will have uh, a better, uh, uh, a better uh, process and uh, a better percentage of the good leader, uh, and therefore a better policies and uh, save. Uh, you are speaking longer than seven thirty. You will have to stop. Uh, uh, thank you for listening to my speech. I'm very proud of the world. I thank the speaker for that speech. I will now invite the leader of the opposition to continue this debate. Here, here. Um, before I start, can you please tell me if you can hear me well? Yeah. Cool. So the speech will start from my first word. All right. So um, OG talks about how technos technocracy brings more co brings more competent people to power, but they don't explain the main things that they have to prove in this debate, which is, but who chooses these competent people? We believe that it's quite likely it will be the dictator and he will choose them to his interest, right? He will not choose someone that goes against the dictator's interest, um, et cetera, or the elites that govern the country. Also, they don't explain what does competent mean, right? Um, we believe that competent is someone that, who can please the people and we're gonna explain why. Um, and also, um, they talk about how you get better leaders because it's a better process for choosing the leader. Um, Whereas in democracy, um, they only care about pleasing the people through speech and other things. Um, but people are not stupid. So we believe in the average world, people have average intelligences. And yes, it is possible that some people will be convinced through uh, prefer paraphernalia or things like speech, but most people have some brain and can think and have some critical thinking. So we don't believe that all people have to be told what, like without being able to choose anything, right? Um, so, what is the world that we think that we have to define? Right, so we have to define um, a state where governing means leading a country to the people's interest, right? So this is what states exist for, for people's interest, to protect people, right? So this needs to be necessarily a communication 
for the leader to know what the people's interest is. It's not possible to have just a leader leading by himself because there's no way we believe that he will be able to lead to the people's interest, right? And who are the people? Right, the people are not just the elites. They're not just the leaders. We believe that the people is everyone. It's the middle classes, it's the lower classes, it's the most popular classes. It's also like maybe the higher classes, but it's everyone in the country, right? So we believe that um, to, to be able to please all these people, you need to communicate with them. And we also believe that people's interest is not always having a more efficient country, right? A more wealthy country, for example, have it, having a higher GDP, um, promoting the industry. We believe that it can also be having like a more diverse country or having more um, labor rights or having more other kind of regulations, having a, a bigger um, healthcare system, having a yeah, more subsidized education. It can be a lot of things. So we don't believe that having a leader that can make the country more efficient is always what people want. And to know what people want, we need this communication. So what are the, we have to prove the metric to this debate is in which people, are, in which world are we gonna make the people in the country more happy, right? In which, in which world are we gonna make their claims more, um, more, yeah. Um, we are going to like be able to reach their claims better, right? So we bring here two arguments. Um, first, we believe that techno technocracy can lead to the abuse of power, right? So it can lead to the creation of elite, elite, which no one can stop, right? So if you have bad technocrats, you're not able to, to withdraw them. You're not able to um, change them, right? So whereas in democracy, you can always change the leader if they abuse power. So leaders will not abuse power. They will work more for the people to please them so that in the next election, they, they vote them again. So in our world, in a world with democracy, we believe that leaders, leaders will, will work more to please as many people as possible because every person has a vote, right? So um, they know that if they please them a lot, they will get elected in the next election again, whereas technocrats don't have any incentive. Point. Um, I will take the point later. Also, um, our second argument here is that technocracy leads to a lack of social policies, right? We believe that technocrats want to please other stakeholders, like for example, international allies, like other dictators in the world or other um, um, state leaders in the world that can support them. They can also want to please probably like internal, internal institutions, such as for example, the dictator that elected them or the king. Um, so they have no incentive to do policies to please the most popular classes. They don't have an incentive to please the lower classes, the middle classes. They have only incentives to please those people that elected them or the, those people that support them. So it's hard for them to do social policies and to please the country as a whole. Um, so even if a democracy would not be as efficient, maybe to increase the GDP, for example, um, because obviously it leads to um, a certain instability, we agree with this. Um, we believe that a country where the citizens have no voice can in no way make people happy, can in no way um, at, like address their claims um, directly. And because what makes us happy as human beings is being heard and being, um, and, and, and being relevant and having our claims heard, um, there's no way that in our in our country with with technocracy these people will be as happy. And I will take the point now. What you have said about uh, technocracy applied to other democ uh, to the democracy. For example, we have Erdogan uh, in Turkey. He is in his way to turning Turkey into a dictatorship, and the uh, candidates in uh, democracy are uh, susceptible for manipulation. Right. I'm not sure I understand that point. I heard something about uh, candidates in democracy susceptible for manipulation um i don't really think this is the case i we are trying to prove exactly the opposite we believe that i think that what he means is that um democracy can lead to populisms like um yeah like how og talked about uh trump and yes it's true we believe that it can lead to populisms but at least it's someone that people 
chose, right? So after four years, people can choose someone else if, if it went wrong, right? Um, so we believe that um, it's less likely for a country to be led wrongly in a democracy because if it's, it's led wrongly by someone, they can just change them, change him in, in the next four years, right? So they can choose someone that pleases their claims better in the next four years. Whereas in a dictatorship, if you get a bad dictator, if you get bad, bad in a technocracy, sorry, if you get bad technocrats, there's no way you can change them. So it's quite likely that they will try to abuse power, that they will rule for, for, for their own interest. And it's also quite likely that they miss totally the social policy. It's quite likely that they don't know what people really want and um, that they are not able to attain these claims and to, un to attain these interests. So yes, we believe that in some cases in a democracy, leaders will try to use manipulation to convince people to vote. You are speaking but longer than 7.30 and you will have to stop. Right, so thank you. <laughs> I thank the speaker for that speech and I'll invite the Deputy Prime Minister to continue this debate. And guys, please do time your speeches and please do not speak longer than 7.15 if possible. Thank you. I'll be starting in three, two, one. Okay, so I want to start by refuting the point that like the op op opposition mentioned about like dictatorship. I think that that term was overused and trying to um, manipulate the general audience to, because we know that everyone hates dictatorship. But the point here is that technocracy doesn't relate in any sense with dictatorship as you are bringing professional people that know and I will be mentioning a few seconds uh, about political leadership and what about the po uh, political persona that you should present to people. Also, I want to say that like uh, throughout the world and especially in this century, we had few examples of how democracy failed in uh, Western countries first before going to any other Eastern country. Um, I will be giving the example of US and France as two uh, democratic failures and also, I will, okay, let me start by giving like, what is a political leader in your opinions? It is like an extraordinary individual. It is a leader and a doer at the same time. Someone with the perception and someone who gives and someone with a futuristic visionary. Basically someone who has a critical mind in uh, supervising people and having futuristic views. Uh, what do I mean by that? Is that democracy doesn't always give us the best choices someone democ uh, sometimes democracy is only uh, the right to choose between bad and less bad like or the worst and the worst so basically like for example in the example of france uh like the population did not even though like a big part of it was apolitical at that time but didn't have another choice better than macron that's why they did choose it and i mean it's for a country like a big country like France with a, a multiracial background with several races, with a lot of um, immigrants living together in harmony, uh, bringing someone like from the far right will just like bring chaos. And therefore, uh, even the choice of uh, Macron was just like to avoid the worst. So basically here, like we can say that democracy is not always uh, what is the best. And plus the fact that like, uh, Macron is not like uh, having the best background and is not like four years if you are speaking that democracy is four years then you can change and also uh, the technocracy that our government suggested is partly democratic as we never mentioned that like some people should be there forever we mentioned that there are, they will come they will serve the country for a certain period determined like uh, by the the parliament rules and then they will just like be replaced by other extraordinary individuals in the society uh and also like the opposition uh asked how are we gonna make people happy 
I mean, if they think that like making people happy is uh, done by marketizing or by advertising a certain figure, uh, for the example of Cambridge Analytica with Donald Trump in the US that like, uh, regardless of all the provisions or all the visions that were given before, Hillary Clinton could not win as we, some files or some leaks later mentioned that British Analytica together in cooperation with other social media and media channels uh, manipulated the uh, public choice toward like having a more uh, to vote for uh, Trump regardless of uh, whether he's the right candidate or not. For, a, uh, for an autocracy or technocracy, uh, the main point is that uh, people will be judged based on their CVs. The same way you are going to apply for a job, you're not, go you're not getting into a job because most of people in that, uh, uh, in that factory or that organization like you, but you're, you're getting accepted for that job because you deserve it. You have certain criteria that lead you to be able and qualified to be working in that post especially. As the same thing, for example, in, in our technocracy, we say that they should have a higher education degree and also having some experience in the working field. Therefore, they will have some, developed some wisdom together like with knowing what is it about, not only theoretically, but also practically. So they will balance between theory and practice in their field, for example, Minister of Economy will be always already an economist who know how the banks work, who know how investments work, who know like the ups and downs of economies, how economies develop and how economies can shut down. And also like someone who is like politically correct and know how to, and have a, like a prime minister or a lead like a president should have this vision of sudden like perhaps like a mix of political sciences and international relations. Uh, and like being able to communicate with other leaders from other parts of the world and create more and develop more the relations of uh, their own country. Uh, if there are some POs, I would love to answer. And also I wanted to speak about like the psychology of crowd events or the psychology of like social identification. Basically like what democracy is failing at is that inside one community, uh, they split based on some small psychological like uh, criteria or psychological facts that are useless for the continuity for, of, uh, of the society as a whole, as a nationalist state, as an open and uh, modern state. Uh, basically, like it's just that we, it's already known in scientific fields that uh, people would just associate or go to the side that they will feel more uh, similar with. And then it just like split inside of the country. I guess that is, that is it for me. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that speech. I now invite the deputy leader of the opposition to conclude the debate on the opening half here, here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I can. I'll put the video just for the my speech. Um, okay. Because of silence. All right. Um, so to begin with, I, I will start with some of the um, characterization uncertainties here. Um, because it's not always quite clear what um, the government means by technocracy um, in their speeches uh, so far. And it has been challenged already by um, CEO in an earlier POI and by my, by my partner uh, previously. Um, and to an extent, um, OG is trying to turn the motion into a policy motion, uh, where it's not quite clear whether these technocrats uh, would be elected, nominated by who, and we've shown you previously that there are huge issues of accountability 
and interest, uh, like at which interest technocrats are saving in general um, in a technocracy. And I'm going to elaborate on that a bit later. Um, but um, first, wh what um, what do we understand as a technocracy in general, right? Um, so, and we need to recognize first that we have already some technocratic institutions uh, at present. Uh, if you take things like um, central banks, for example, uh, you, you can um, most of the time consider them as being technocratic under uh, the status quo. Um, and it's not even necessarily a matter of degrees, right? Um, contrary to um, some of the um, things OG has been saying, if you take for example, Christina Agar, she doesn't have a degree in economics, it doesn't prevent her from uh, being the head of a technocratic institution. Um, but then what, what would it mean to be living in a technocracy in general, right? So we believe that under the status quo, there are some agencies um, with some given functions, um, which are, um, we, which we can, which we can um, reasonably consider as being technocratic. And to transition from a democracy to a pop, like a sort of full-blown technocracy would be to um, um, to have that done across the board. That is to have many more dedicated agencies, experts, etc. Uh, many more people who are non-elected and who have uh, high responsibilities in um, in a country. Um, who are now the, the one, um, yeah, non ethnic people uh, who are now the one taking the decisions, right? Um, so that's what will be a proper uh, technocracy in our understanding. Um, so now what will be the, the issue with that? Even if we take um, OG at their best, um, in that people who end up in this position would be sort of competent, right? Which is not guaranteed either. We've seen many cases of people being nominated at top positions for um, given technocratic agencies, which did not have that many skills because behind that there are still political interests, right? Um, they are nominated by other uh, by actual active uh, by actual active politicians. So, and people at the end of technocratic institutions are not necessarily competent. But okay, leaving that apart, even say if they are competent, uh, and we assume that they are efficient on scoring on a certain metric, right? Um, taking good decisions. On a certain metric, um, so then there's a huge risk, and that's what my partner has been telling you about. Point. It's actually, not compatible. I'm going to take you later. Um, actually, not compatible um, with the general interest of the population, right? Um, because as soon as you um, start living in such a technocracy, you just introduce more uh, distance, and that is also an inherent feature of technocracy: more distance between uh, these non-elected decision makers and the population because um, the accountability process um, is uh, much more complicated, even if um, there are still a couple of elected politicians extra to nominate the technocrats, uh, you just add one more layer, uh, or at least one more layer between people taking these important decisions for the technocrats and um, the electoral body uh, that you add under um, uh, the democracy. So we have a more, um, lose uh, accountability process, and you have technocrats uh, who um, don't have to answer directly uh, to the population because uh, they haven't been directly elected by the population. And oftentimes, uh, they have been taught to uh, um, do things in a certain way, or they have been taught to serve certain interests by the people who nominated them. Um, but it is not something, it is not a project that they had to defend in front of the general population. It is not um, something that they have been elected on. It is not, it was not part of the certain uh, political agenda that was pushed through during the election process, right? Uh, because they just do what they are good for. And these things may be at odds with what the country is naming at the moment, right? Uh, so we've seen that even for um, economists, right? You have economists from, um, uh, with many different styles that, it's not like because you are one economy that you're going to be efficient in some ways because there are many different um, sort of movements in um, economics in general. So um, what one person, um, what one economist would advise um, would be absolutely in contradiction with uh, the advice of another economist, right? So um, even here, um, because these economists are belong to different uh, schools uh, of thought, then uh, they're going to serve um, 
certain interests uh, which are linked to uh, this movement that they belong to. Uh, but if at the moment the population needs uh, something else, maybe um, that would uh, be better given by another movement and they just cannot provide it. Uh, I'm going to take a uh, point now. What we are telling you is, in general, if you have a degree and experience in a specialization, you are uh, uh, more likely to know more than other people in that specialize, uh, specific, uh, specialization. And the other thing, uh, uh, all people are susceptible to their predetermined uh, ideology and the ideology that they have in democracy and in uh, technocracy. Yeah, so... Okay, maybe a couple of um, points on that is that uh, first people who are nominated still have a huge body of experts to rely on, right? If you are Minister of Economics, even if you are just a politician before, you have still so many economists who can take advice on. If you are Minister of Health, you have a huge body of experts, um, doctors that you can consult on basically every decision. And so you can consult people who are actually specialized in things because if you take at a minister level, you cannot... Uh, you cannot have the expertise on the whole thing that you're supposed to manage, right? Uh, what, what's important is, is being a good manager and um, being able, to, like being accountable to the people, right? Um, and th that's, and you can still rely on uh, those who have the knowledge. Um, and therefore, because you have this accountability, you're more, better to, uh, more likely to take the actual good decision that you're expected to. Um, for all these reasons, I'm very proud to oppose. Thank you for that speech. I now invite the member of government to open the debate on the closing house. Here, here. Hello. <clears throat> I can start. Okay. Uh, today, people's relationship with technical processes is increasing and they pr prioritize and trust technical decisions rather than individual decisions they make. So we cannot say that uh, it is it is a dictatorship in uh, technosory because uh, there are many controlling mechanisms in this process, such as scientific boards, supervisors, supervisors, etc. Yeah, my first argument is that people can have huge emotional changes or wrongly made decisions in their daily lives. It is at the core of being human, seeing their own individual experiences and lifestyle as reality is a big problem in the politi political sciences. So it is not possible to prevent irrational elections and manipulations that may be experienced within the democratic system. Democracy cannot solve this problem even if the desire of the, some of the people will cause great harm to the other. It makes it possible for the country to offer an equal and healthy system for all its citizens. Uh, they are all, Mm, there is not uh, all of them are equal because the main process of the governments, sorry, no, the main process of the governments uh, is the making their uh, citizens' life better and uh, get votes and maintain their power. Also, since individuals do not have expertise in fields such as economics, law, education, we cannot make rational and especially correct decisions in democracy because they are people. And also, uh, the, uh, the second one is that the margin of error, error of technical decision is much less. The most basic services uh, that should be offered to people uh, today are law, health, edu education, etc. Technically correct decisions must be made to provide these services in the best possible way. For example, methods to maximize the level of learning in education or having equality all of the people and making exactly the right decisions in law. Political decisions can be taken to harm the country. Uh, the main interest group is the government and do does not want to lose vote. What? Uh, so some political decisions that it takes maybe things that will harm the public and and cause harm in the long run. And also, uh, individuals who have the political power may want to use their own views and wish to man manage uh, the public. And that uh, the rulers have such a desire after being chosen, they can use the power of their position for their own ideology and desires. For example, 
uh, it is possible to see uh, here uh, Hitler. He did something unacceptable unacceptable to humanity but he used the power he had in uh, doing so preventing individuals who have political power from implementing their own decisions will also prevent uh, major losses because such an individual decision or ideology is not important in te te technocracy the decisions made favor the public because there's no personal benefit. Also, uh, uh, I can take your point. So what makes you think that um, technocrats are free of any ideological bias? While we have seen repeatedly that it's not the case, like technocrats nominated in uh, the head of environmental identity, for example, in the US, are very biased uh, toward destructing the environment. Okay, because uh, it is much better than uh, taking uh, citizens' benefits uh, rather than the uh, personal benefits uh, who is the leader of the uh, country. So we can say that it is uh, at least uh, uh, better than uh, for ideological decisions. And, uh, and also there is my uh, ethical argument. If you want to hold political power, you may have to lie, you may ha have to ignore ethics, and this will make me morally legitimate. Uh, because uh, you mislead the public and a manipulative policy means to trade on, because that is the pol political, political power. Uh, so uh, you can trade on or you can exploit the trust of the individuals in you. Although uh, the main task is to satisfy the public, you will not able to fulfill this task. Uh, and also you will ignore the moral rules while doing this. So uh, you are immoral in this, uh, in the democracy. Uh, this leaves you in a moral, morally um, illegitimate situation. Thank you. Thank you for that speech, and I will invite the member of the opposition to continue this debate. Good afternoon, Chen. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm starting in three, two, one. You know, in order to rebut uh, what the closing government brings us, it is enough to tell you that in real democracies, the right checks and balances, and there is representative democracy. And those representatives are indeed incentivized to explain their policies to the people so that uh, people can make rational choices in their best interest and can weed out the politicians who are not ethical, moral, and who have not been, have not had a good track record in doing what they said they would do. So now going over to my case, we are going to explain to you why representation suffers and why it is important and what are the true concrete harms that flow from that. First of all, representation is important because it gives political elites feedback uh, in two ways. First, the political elites have to listen to the people in order to get elected. So they, uh, the people, if they are passionate about a certain issue, they can tell uh, the elected officials that they want this issue done. And if elected ele officials want to get elected, then they're going to work on that issue and promote that. And also it works as an accountability mechanism where elites are replaced when they fuck up. And that is a very important thing that prevents the elites from uh, corruption or from uh, diverging too much from the interests of the public. But the second important mechanism that the opening opposition did not talk about at all is the diversity mechanism, because uh, the um, technocracy that the government wants to promote looks very similar. It has all the same people in it as a part of the elite. All of them have the same education all of them are part of the same class, like higher middle, middle class, and uh, uh, none of them really know what uh, 
uh, what uh, uh, the other people want and what uh, the other people want to do. You can say that uh, in uh, uh, the status quo, uh, it is uh, the same, but no, uh, because in the status quo, uh, democratic mechanisms al allow people from other classes and from other backgrounds to enter politics because they represent their own demographics, and that creates diversity uh, and it prevents the situation in technocracy where uh, the lower classes and underprivileged minorities are structurally underrepresented. And I'll take a point here. So my question was about like social class and competency, as you mentioned. So basically, don't you think that Okay, I understand your point. Uh, so, in order to rebut opening government, you just need to tell uh, the, uh, the, the panel uh, that uh, if you are a politician, you have a lot of experts and a lot of institutes and think tanks that can provide you with expertise and you can make this, your decisions based on the expertise they bring to you. Okay, so what are the concrete harms that flow from lack of representation? First, we believe that this is populism and that populism is actually, uh, actually flows from too little of democracy but not too much of that because pop populism increases when people feel that, uh, uh, you, uh, that they are not represented, that the political system is not working for them and then they are going to vote for politicians that are popular or if there are no elections anymore, they are going to promote revolution or something else. And then all those harms that flow from populism and lack of expertise are actually realized when people don't feel that the political system is working for you. Second of all, we believe that people and uh, civil servants only tend to support political decision, decisions when they feel that they've had a say in those decisions. Because when you feel that the decision was made by you too, that means that you're going to support the decision, you're going to cooperate with the government officials, you're going to pay your taxes and so on. But when uh, you feel that the government is promoting something that you've had no say in, the actions of that government will not be efficient because you will not uh, be uh, supportive of them. We also believe that the lack of representation that technocracy brings, brings you all kinds of corruption, corruption because of lack of accountability. You're not voted out when something, information about your corruption emerges. And that means that uh, you as a part of the elite can engage in direct corruption, can um, do rigged bidding procedures, and uh, allow your friends to benefit from your position in the government. And that is only something that the elective uh, mechanisms can allow you to do, uh, because if you don't have elective mechanisms, then people get entrenched in power and they form their own friendship networks and loyalty and so on. And it is hard to get those people out of power. Um, uh, you also tend to get very skewed decision making when you only have people who are part of a single class, like uh, 80th uh, percentile and higher in the social hierarchy. You're going to promote ideas that are important for your class. For instance, you're going to protect war, pr pr uh, promote wars for oil uh, because that brings more money for your friends who are working in oil and gas industry. Uh, uh, but are not going to care about lower classes who are going to be the soldiers who will be fighting in those wars. And you're also not going to protect healthcare for all when you feel that all, all your friends can get health insurance very easily, but you don't really realize or empathize with the fact that many people can't. And we also believe that only politicians can really make good decisions even, because experts cannot make good decisions. Why is that? because experts are normally emerged, immersed very deeply in their own field and in their own ideas. If you have an economist, that economist normally only cares about the state of the economy, about the enterprises, about the GDP growth, and so on. They don't care about cultural issues, ethical issues. They don't care about sociology. And that means that in order to make good decisions and balanced decisions, you need politicians who are 
able to hear uh, all, all expertise from different points and then make good decisions. And th for all of those reasons, we are very proud to oppose. Thank you. Well, I thank the speaker for that speech. I now invite the government whip to conclude the debate from the government side. Here, here. Okay, um, sir. <laughs> okay, um, let me start. Um, I think the major problem is today the uh, the whole opposition side, not not just like uh, the opening and closing. They are they they claiming that they uh, the, these elites they are like they they will discriminate people. They are they are, they, are, they don't care about like. Poor people's problems in the in the country, and they don't care about the the culture and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But the problem is this elite group is not something like it's not same with the like in democratic systems because these elite groups are they they're just technologically or like you know it's intellectual it's an intellectual uh, difference like because um, the, the the difference is like the, and also there are other major problems they they are um, they are talking about they're uh, taking account into the um, uh, the technocracy is something similar, same to the uh, like uh, dictatorship or something. Because uh, we claim that the techno this in technocracy we have a like you know we have a like council and their only motivation is like uh, you know increase the, the wealth of their people without any ide ideological or without any things that uh, my, as my as my teammate, teammate told that uh, like limits people's like limits uh, the production of country that, that limits like. You know, like something unnecessary things like ideological discussions, ideological differences, and etc. So we are claiming that this this uh, this elite group, their only motivation will be like you know, the science is something quantitative. So you cannot claim you cannot claim that it is like you know they only care about the the the, the uh, like the sci scientific things. But we claim that this also uh, affects all the people equal in the country. Like it's not it's not discriminated about Muslim or Christian or any another religion. But you know, if the GDP is increased in the country, it affects everyone in a, in a good way. So so how do you claim that? that like in the, like techno the, that's like in technocracy, they don't care about culture. They, just like the, the closing uh, the closing opposition's only uh, argument for that, they they more focus their own field and they don't care about social sociology or culture or something. How? Point to opening. No, 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 no. These people are educated in the public schools. They, these people are educated in the like universities, in the, in, the, in the public universities, and in the, in that country. Of course, they know their father and their their mother. They they lived in that country. They know the what is the values or cultures or the the things, the, the norms in that country. So you cannot claim that it's some. It's really, uh, it's really, uh, it's unacceptable. Also, the like. It, by the way, these elite groups also these are these things occurs in the like uh, the political government also, and it will be really utopic if you like uh, if you consider like more democratic leader because this is absolutely true. Yani, in the in democracy, you are if you if you are a political chosen leader, you have to like make real your promises that you give that that you have give the, the give the, your your interest group before you elect it. So in democracy, you should care the your interest group, and there is no democratic leader that does not work for like, increase its sovereignty. In, 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 that uh, that uh, that has no motivation to elect it again. So that's why in democratic leaders they are, um, you know, they are using values of people. They are using the religion of people. They, they are manipulating them. They are spec they are making speculations about you know the values of cultures of people. So according to us, this democratic system, these democratic leaders, they are um, using the, the wrong way the the culture of um, the the you know the sociology as as. Uh, 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 closing oper uh, closing opposition says they're using in a wrong way that's values of values of people but in technocracy you know it, as i said in, at the beginning is something really um, quantitative like you know it, if gdp is increased it's increased it means it's kind of development so by the way also uh, also we claim that you know it's like uh, it won't be something like dictatorship 
not not yet. It's something. It's, it it won't be something like dictatorship because you know there will be. Yeah, you know, we uh, we can claim that there will be some council that uh, like make control that like regulating that uh, that government as today, like you know the the jurisdiction or something etc. Anyway, so that's why it's no. It won't be like uh, dictatorship or something because their only motivation will be increase they increase people's wealth and their technology their technological level and in the country and etc so um so the, the the main problem the main problem here they are uh taking into account a very uh utopic very democratic country but uh also there are some problems in that kind of democratic democratic uh, democratic countries uh that's like you know the, the manipulating and speculations and that's part of democracy but in our model it's more uh you know, it's only motivation. There is no like ideological uh, problems, and just the government, the the the, the uh, how to say the uh, the the government, the government's only motivation is just like increase people's wealth. So it's also it's all uh, just only uh, possible in the technocracy. In in democracy, it's not uh, it's not like the same. Yeah. So okay, I can take uh, uh, from the closing open opposition. Only the people know what they really need and what they really want, and no indicator is going to tell you that. Your GDP can grow, but it can only benefit only the wealthy, as in the US, where GDP grows, but the median wage is going down. Okay, okay, but this is, okay, this is not something, there is no, okay, also in like democratic systems, uh, it, I, I think the details are not necessary. Of course, you're, you're right, the, the, the poor people or people that has not, no graduate level or something anyway, um, they, 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 they don't understand uh, very well from details, but, but uh, at, to some extent, it's something scientific still, because like if GDP, I'm not talking about this, it's something like an ex example for you understand, like if you, uh, if you increase GDP, uh, if the and if the wealth of country, if you're like uh, po if you if your power of purchase increase, you feel that in the market in your daily life. So you 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 will be sure that your technocratic uh, your technocratic government is working well. So this is the case. I think uh, the, the the public also understands very well. And in democratic system, political leaders they are using values of people and ideological their ideological differences and uh, uh, to in order to manipulate them in order to uh, like elected more so um, they so that's that's why they uh, argument them, themselves accordingly so that's the major problem here but in technocracy you know the the motivation is more pure something more certain and it's something more uh, you know criticized but in uh, in like democratic it's democratic system it's it will be more hard in to, to the regulate society okay thank you then a speaker for that speech and I uh, I now invite the opposition web to conclude this debate as a whole. Great. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Well, uh, let's go. First of all, uh, some points about why democracy can be efficient enough without technocrats. First, there is check and balance systems which push politicians to make collective deliberative decisions with consent of different political actors, including technocrats in existing in modern democracy. Uh, second point is that politicians, in order to be re-elected, need to be efficient because people care about efficiency too, and they are able to feel good or bad consequences for economy uh, from particular policy on themselves. And plus, we think that people are able to watch GDP statistics, media have incentives to deliver this information to people, to inform them about that. And we do not understand why government side think that people are so stupid that they do not care about themselves. What is more important, we, uh, we tell you that people have right for representation, have right uh, to vote for instrumental reasons. In other words, people are the best judges of their own interests. It's okay to substitute economy for crime if you want it. If, they, if people prefer populists without degree to technocrats, it's so because because populists fit to people's interest in the best way and people are the best one who can know it. In other words, probabilities that elected politicians will be consistent with actual preferences or, in other words, utility function of people is more significant on our side and thus we outweigh closing government. Next. 
uh, our important part of the case is that we explain you why even technocrats are akin to abuse uh, to abuse of power. Well, how we explain you this? First, uh, my teammate explain you that those people can entrench in power and they get used to power, and thusly they and to power and to non accountability, and thusly they just get used to decisions not in people interest but in interest of uh, those elites technocratic elites second explanations we give to you is that those people can care only about their own interests or interests of their own class or their friends for instance university friends from, from um, top universities or from uh, ex-colleagues on from the work and the problem is that those people very often are people from uh <laughs> let's say white privileged uh, gender and so on groups and they do not have real incentives without accountability to whole population to care about whole population why this is important it's extremely important in comparison of our half with opening one why? Because it mm, significantly influences opening a position case. It increases probability of all consequences that they are, uh, talk, have talked about. Because it means that those politicians not only are not accountable, but are akin to bad decision for, uh, for decision that uh, influence only um, allies in best way. What are the consequences and why this is important? The consequences is, in general, it's corruptions, but my teammate explain you how it works in different areas. First of all, it's, for instance, economy, because corruptions leads to divergence of public benefits to uh, lights and to friends of lights, not to people. Second, it's political, uh, sorry, second, it's cultural consequences. Artem ex uh, explain you why in simple thing that technocrats are akin to care only about the area of knowledge and closing government says that the, uh, this lights also exist in um, popular culture, culture and not so, sorry, and uh, care, uh, can care about uh, culture too. The problem is that those people exist uh, actually not in popular culture, culture, but usually in a light one. And even if they, uh, are, they were born poor, black and so on, the problem is that when you become uh, a light, you now exist in a light culture and thusly uh, you, un you have no interest and have no, thusly have no incentives to create uh, government, um, uh, government help for uh, access to those uh, for, for any cultural benefits. For instance, it means that government will not subsidize, I don't know, theaters and museum, which is important for people for any cultural reasons. What does it mean in uh, general? To sum up, even if efficiency increases, it disproportionately increase, increases for technocratic elites and not for the people. And thusly, all uh, CG case is uh, not so important. Uh, next point. Uh, uh, With opening government, uh, it's quite important. Uh, okay. We first, no thanks. Uh, we explain uh, probability of populism better because we explain why people actually are akin to believe populists because they think that they are disenfranchised from the current system and lack of representations obviously increase this feeling of disenfranchising and uh, thusly uh, lead to bad to all bad consequences of populism we explained to you. Moreover, we give you. Um, more wide spectrum of consequences. We explain how corruptions influence not only economy as opening opposition actually tells you, but how it ex uh, ex uh, influence economy, how it uh, from corruption uh, and uh, divergence of benefits, how it influence also, for instance, cultural uh, consequences, and thus we prevail over um, opening half. Uh, and some extent, Corruption also can lead to bad political decisions. This is, for instance, case of oil intervention of the United States. The problem is that people very often do not have interest in war. They do not want, uh, uh, and also moral interest in war. Uh, 
the problem is the technocrats can be popul populist and can be influenced by war and thusly they have no hinders they have no uh, humanitarian incentives not to engage in war but still have financial incentives to uh, to engage in war and make military action and thusly we are very proud to oppose tanks I thank the uh, speaker for that speech. I thank you all for a very fine debate. I will now just mute myself, uh, come up with the call, and then it went as follows. The first goes to closing opposition, the second to opening opposition, the third to opening government, and the fourth, unfortunately, to closing government. Here's the logic behind the call. So the definition we get from opening government, in terms of what technocracy is, seems to be quite vague. As in, they would want more competent people in power to define competence to essentially degrees, having a background in a certain field. Like if you want to be prime minister, you have you need to have a political science degree or an economics degree for being a, a minister for finance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They are unclear as to what extent of democracy they still retain within the system, because when they are asked directly through a POI, how do they? let's say, juxtapose technocracy in comparison to democracy, we don't really get a clear answer from them. A lot of the examples that opening government refers to also seem to be referring to things that would exist within the framework of democracy. Like, for example, when they say it would have been a far better decision if Hillary Clinton had been elected. Hillary Clinton is a democratic politician, not a technocrat. So it is unclear from OG what they change in terms of how technocracy replaces democracy. And this is a general piece of feedback I have towards their case. But the general crux of their case is, look, we have more competent people. Yeah? Uh, the thing, like, when we defined, we were speaking about, like, how technocracy is more seeing people as pragmatically, like, as the candidates especially. We're not, like, we didn't claim that uh, Hillary Clinton would have been a better choice. Meanwhile, we claimed that, like, in democracy, the choices are so limited and there is much more marge of like manipulation through modern axioms or... Yeah, yeah uh, I, will, I will get to that. So the general crux of the open government case is the following. We have more competence, we have people who are more likely to be able to make the right decisions. We also have people who are not likely to manipulate uh, the general public, to manipulate the electorate. Therefore, we will not have a situation of just choosing uh, the lesser of two evils, like we had with Emmanuel Macron, as the DPM says. Rather, we're going to have people who have a real vision, who are able to deliver in terms of what is best for the country. We're going to have more correct candidates. Uh, also, the Hillary Clinton example was explicitly said in PM, as in all of these things with coronavirus would have been avoided if Hillary Clinton had been chosen. That was an explicit reference. How does this compare to opening opposition? So essentially, what opening opposition does is it explains that, look, what we get in democracy is a logic of what the people have chosen that they desire. This may be a bad thing. This may not necessarily lead to good consequences. However, it is some kind of input given that the state and the premise of the state is that it should provide what is best for the people. Therefore, if the people have decided that they want something, this is most likely going to lead to people's happiness. Why? Does this take over opening government? Because it seems that the happiness is the only metric I can legitimately measure decisions on when from OG, I do not get a clear definition of what a right decision is, i.e. I do not think OG has epistemic access to the definition of a right decision, nor do they explain what does a right decision mean for society. Also, it would seem that OG's case is kind of based on the premise that technocrats are saints, more or less, like people who are unlikely to make a mistake, people with futuristic visions, people, people who are extremely competent, people who are not going to manipulate the public. I'm completely unsure why I should believe that technocrats are morally superior people. They may have more competence. They may have a degree. I'm unsure why I would consider them to be superior as human beings, why I would consider them to be more capable in terms of their general faculties than an ordinary person. At that point, if I get no warrant from government as to why technocrats are going to be better at delivering apart from they have a degree, which opening opposition clearly points out and says, 
we can have that on our side as well because every ministry, every cabinet has advisors, has experts. We can co opt that expertise, but at least we can have feedback from the people, which is very important unless we consider that a technocrat is a perfect person who can perfectly assess all of the needs and preferences in society. It would seem that opening opposition gets the best of both worlds because it can still retain the expertise, but they can also maximize individuals' happiness. Given that happiness is likely to be bigger on their side, if from government, I do not get a clear explanation of why I should believe that the technocrat is going to be able to make the objectively correct decision or why there is an objectively correct decision in the first place, this takes over opening government. There's a couple of other things that come from out of opening opposition. And this is where they say, look, there's less incentive for social policy to be created. But also, secondly, more importantly, I think that there is a good explanation of the mechanism of accountability on opening opposition, where they explain, look, if you have a democracy and if a decision does not truly really maximize happiness and it leads to bad consequences, people can vote their representatives out. Whereas in technocracy, even if there is the best possible interest of the technocrats, so this guy really is moral and this guy really is competent. If he doesn't get feedback on what the people want and what is necessary for them, he'll be less capable to make the good decision. So we're willing to trade off some manipulation if it happens for the ability of a political representative to know what the people need in the first place, because there is no warrant why the technocrat, even if he has a degree and even if he has the best intentions, is able to assess that all by himself. Therefore, the effects of manipulation are mitigated by the fact that in the long term you can change the political who represent you, but there's an exclusive benefit on opening opposition to the extent to which they get actual information based on which decisions can be created. Therefore, I'm willing to buy from OG that they get more competence on their side. I am not sure why this competence will translate to a better situation within the state, or even if it does in terms of some economic indicators or whatever, I'm not sure why that's more important than the wishes of the people. And I don't think that in particular has been weighed off. Bringing in closing government. So the reason why closing government loses to opening government is largely because most of the content provided by closing has already been present and analyzed to a very similar extent in opening government. <clears throat> so in essence, uh, the idea coming from closing government as to how we are going to get more competent decisions rather than emotional decisions by the people who tend to decide impulsively and who do not have the expertise because they did, they did not understand the field, they do not know how the field works, all of that was largely present in opening government. The second argument, which is on the uh, immorality of the person, is contingent on this person really doing immoral acts when they are a democratic politician, which is not only exclusively in opening government, where they explain how in democracy, because you want, to, you want to whip up votes, you have the incentive to manipulate people, so they elect you. So they're the ones who explain the incentives that are necessary for you to become immoral. But secondly, it kind of seems a circular argument. So you do things which we consider are immoral, therefore you are immoral, and this is bad, and this is bad because it is immoral. I'm unsure what the logic behind this argument based on which I'm supposed to weigh it is, i.e., why is the fact that a person is now immoral by some moral metric, for which I do not even know if it's the right moral metric, right? Because it's obviously CG considers this immoral, so this is immoral. But even if the person is now immoral, and I buy this, why is the fact, the objective ex existential fact that they are immoral, more important than anything else in the debate? I.e., why is the fact of their immorality more important than the consequences of the immorality. And the consequences of the immorality, in terms of the manipulation, in terms of democracy being a choice between the worst, worst of, uh, lesser of two evils, is explained by opening government. So even if I buy that as an addition, I think OGR pays that. Then obviously you lose to OO by transitivity, but another reason why you lose to OO, then given that the cases are similar, is pretty much the same reason why opening government loses to OO, and that is OO gets to co-opt a lot of the expertise I'm unsure how you deal with the fact that if things go wrong and there are pretty much no warrants that things won't go wrong apart from the sanctification of technocrats, that they, are people, that they will always care about the best interests of the people, that they will always know what it says, that they're with like huge visions and they will know what's a good thing to do. If 
I don't have a warrant that things won't go to shit at some point, then if they go to shit, and there is a possibility, even if this guy has the best intentions, opening up has the mechanism to rectify this. Whereas on government side, both government sides, I do not know how I deal with the worst possible outcomes of technocracy, i.e. government bench only works if things work out perfectly. But if they don't, our bench seems to be the only one that has the mechanisms to resolve this. Bringing in closing opposition. So the reason why closing opposition takes it over opening opposition is largely because they go quite further than opening opposition in terms of providing the actual comparison of harms. So most of opening opposition's case is to say there are certain harms, like the lack of social policy, like the lack of accountability. But the most of opening opposition's case is based on the premise, that regardless of what the people choose, this is better because it reflects the people's interest and it has a degree of accountability to the people. And then they also have mitigation in terms of we can also have experts and stuff like this. What closing opposition does is explain why the decisions and policies within technocracy are likely to be worse in and of themselves. I.e., they explain that it is not just the distance towards the population, which is like the most charitable interpretation. Like, so this guy is a good guy, he's just distant. It's also there are perverse incentives on the parts of technocrats as well. So not just corruption, which I'm not sure how, how intuitive it is, uh, because presumably it's illegal, but what's more intuitive is the idea of patronage networks, right? The fact that you necessarily, given that you're used to making decisions without accountability, the people that you talk to, the people that matter to you most are your clique, are other people in the, uh, in the cabinet, are people who you want to trade favors with for some kind of influence. These are for me that you do not necessarily prioritize the people and the people's interests. Even if there is therefore an objective decision, you're less likely to make it. The second thing that they say is populism in and of itself is more likely to grow because when people do not feel that they have control, they're more likely to be pissed at the government. So if there is some kind of elections, you get more Donald Trumps to fight against the establishment. Even if there's not, you get more unrest. So this like physical impact on people's, on people's lives, but also co-opting the populism mechanism that government itself fears. The third thing that they do is they explain how experts tend to be embedded within their own fields, which means that even if they have the best intentions, they very often neglect the spillover effects of their decisions on other sectors, which is easier when you have like a larger cabinet of advisors and politicians, which get the feedback from the people with which they then like can triangulate and stuff and analyze how different things impact each other. But the final thing they do, I think is important in rebuttal is to say in democracy, you have a consensus of different groups. Among these groups are technocrats. You can get the most of the feedback that you want from like op opposing groups and the feedback that the government wants on our side as well. So what does this prove in closing opposition? This proves that A, the technocrats themselves can have perverse incentives. And if they do, we are less able to remove these people with perverse incentives rather than democratic politicians with perverse incentives, which shows that they're not likely to have good intentions, which is something O oh, doesn't engage with all that much. The second thing is that they provide different mechanisms for even the best case scenario of government. And this is, look, here's how populism is going to grow, regardless of what kind of job these people do, because the people feel they're out of control. Regardless if they have like the, if they have knowledge in economics, here's what is good, they're going to fuck up other fields. And this all leads to the accruement of negative impact in terms of what the situation the country is going to be, which therefore goes further than OO because it doesn't just show that whatever the people choose is good, but also that the choices and like real life impacts of the, uh, of the decisions made and of the policies made within the country are going to be worse if you have technocrats. These are also simultaneously the reasons why CRB beats. Opening government, uh, that is the uh, call. If there are no significant questions or doubts, I would move on to uh, short personal feedback. Thank you. Thank you.